there and thank you for joining me today. Today I'm going to talk to you about the progress class from the iSteps Utilities. I'm going to show you how you can use it to display progress bars in your application and how you can also use it to hide and unhide other type of controls at the same time and update them when uh, the progress bar is updated. Okay, now let's start Clarion Aid and get the show on the road. What I'm going to do is I'm going to work with the the people app and we're going to open it here and the first thing we're going to do is to add the ice tips to global extension that will include the classes and everything that is needed for the ice tips utilities any of the classes to work so that's all we need to do here and we Let's go in here and go into the main window and dun, 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 dun. we'll go in and we'll add a button here on the toolbar. Okay, actions. Now let's call a procedure test progress class when is here the thread and let's change the text here to test progress class so we know what we're doing and now we should have a procedure here and we'll use the just the window template it's a very simple generic template here and a MDI child window Let's stretch this up a little bit so we have more room. Now let's go ahead and let's stop by changing the caption here and test progress class. Oops. So. Okay, now let's get uh, we have a progress. Let's put a progress bar here. Let's put it like this, something like that. Oh, what the heck. Let's get another one here. And uh, I think we do it like this way. And hold on, where is the? Oops, wrong thing. Oh well, I will just do it like this. It's easier anyway. Okay, now we have two progress bars here, and let's go ahead and hide both of them. Uh, where is my hide? Hide, 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 hide. There we go. Now they're both hidden. So if we go into the preview here. Hello. There we go. There is nothing on the window. Okay, and let's add the. Now let's just add a close button here. Something like that. Somewhere down here. And let's add another button to start the process. And let's. Same size, please. Well, whatever. And let's. Uh, where do we have this text? Um, start process. And on this button, we will call a routine that starts the process and, and, and keeps it going. So here we have this one here is called progress one, and this one should be called progress two. Let's move now. Where is the go? Progress 2, yes, that's correct. So let's change the thing here to start process button. When we know what, what it is. Okay, and let's go into embeds. And on the accepted, we will call do start process. Start the process routine. And uh, where do we have the routines? We have them right here. And we have something like this. Oops. Routine. Now, uh, let's add a data and code statements here. And now we're ready to... No, we're not quite ready. First, we need to add the class here. Class declaration or instantiation. ITP IT progress class. 
let's back out here all the way here let's uh, save this puppy and let's go back into the embeds okay now let's see take ITP now it pops up in the here ITP init progress one let's say oh we need to add the let's do it here other files let's add the people file here okay uh, records dun, 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 dun. people okay this initializes the progress bar and the progress uh, class to use this control here the progress one and this is the number of records that we anticipate to process so here we will say set people loop and and we say it access people next not equal to level level be nine break and okay so now we have the loop and the only thing we need to do here is ITP update that's it and ITP oops kill the update will update the pro will uh, yes update the progress bar and redisplay it so that everything will be updated. The ITP kill um, hides the progress bar and stops the, the the process. The init, if the the progress bar is hidden, it will unhide it, so it shows up. Now let's see what happens here. This will probably run very very fast, very very fast. So we might need to do something about that. Okay, let's this compile. Okay. Where are my buttons here? Okay, start the process. Whoops, that was really, really fast. So let's go into the embeds again, go into the routine, and let's put this thing to sleep for about 20 milliseconds whoops sleep for about 20 milliseconds per record see how that works out that should slow it down so that we can at least see it but you could could probably see it pop up there for just about a tenth of a second or so that's better that looks better and as you can see it goes from beginning to the end and oops and that's, and that's pretty much all there is to it to make this work with just a single uh, progress bar and no other frills to it that's it there is only three lines of code this one this one and this one that make this make this uh, make this puppy work. Now let let's add this up to 50 milliseconds per record because I want to show you something while this is processing. Now, as you probably noticed, there is no way to stop this or do anything here now that when we start it it's not going to happen nothing's going to happen until it hits the end of the progress so that is what i'm going to talk to you about in the next video is how you can use what we call timer loops to make this so that we could pause it and stop it or cancel it or restart it and stuff like that but first i'm going to finish this video by showing you how you can run this on two different progress bars and first let's add another instance let's call it IP oops, 
let's call it IP uh, ITP2 and let's whoops why is this being so difficult for me? ITP2 same thing, IT progress class and we go down here and we say oh, whoops let's add a variable here called uh, R it's a long and we say R is equal to let's put 100 Oops. so in here we update this one and then we do loop R times end and in here first we need ITP2 init progress to R use the same number there so here we go in and we say ITP2 update and here we say ITP2 kill. Now, here we probably should let this leave for, let yeah, say, 5 milliseconds. That means it's going to be pretty fast, but we're still going, still going to be able to see it. Now let's run this. See how this works. This here a little bit. And well, this is going to take a while. But this shows you how you can set up two progress bars or even multiple progress bars doing the doing different things and, and they may not be completely related. They might actually be running, if, if you had timer loops, they might be running on different things at the same time. So there is no real limit to what you can do with this. And you don't have, need to have a loop. You can use this with uh, some kind of updating or some kind of process that you're doing manually in the background and you just want to have the last thing I want to show you is how you can use the progress class to display other controls and let's go ahead and add a couple of string controls here First, let's use first name, then put another one on there, and use the last name, and let's resize those things a little, and let's hide them, and now we can go in and modify our code here so that we can take care of those two. Now what we need here uh, is a column method called add display control for each of the controls that we want to control. Add display control first name and add display control last name. And then we unhide them with hide controls for oops false. This um, shows the controls when we start doing the process. So let's add a sleep here. Let's put this to sleep for about 20 milliseconds. And this should show us the... let's make it 25. I think that's a little better. That This will, should show us when we run it, how those controls are updated when the progress runs. And as you can see, it's updating the, the names here. And that's it for today. Please join me next time when we explore using timer loops with the progress class and progress bars to make it easier on the end user to stop the process, pause it, restart it, and stuff like that. So, thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, I hope to see you next time. Thank you very much.